Hi, this is Donald from Soft Roading the West, and we're at the Asphere 4x4 booth. Asphere 4x4 is actually based in Israel. They produce, they manufacture the skid plates in Israel. Uh, but they have very fast shipping to get it here to the United States. Everything is made out of quarter inch aluminum, and we have a wide range of vehicles available. Uh, for more details, I'm going to hand you over to Enoch. Right there. But stay tuned, we are going to walk around Donald's Topo Topper. Frontier. <laughs> Frontiering the West. Or rock crawling the West. All of them. All because he's got the sphere skid plates on the bottom. So we do our uh, aluminum skid plates 100%. Uh, they're 50-52 aluminum. We use galvanized steel brackets to attach everything to the frame. Everything's 100% bolt-on. No drilling, no welding needed. We use class 8 bolts to adhere everything to the vehicle as well. Uh, you can do an entire set in your car install in roughly about an hour to two hours, depending on your skill level. Uh, we send you with all the hardware, instructions, and information you need to successfully make an install. Um, if you want to check us out more, go to sphere.com and uh, we can kind of like break down all the cool stuff that we have on there. We manufacture for almost 30 different manufacturers. So all you gotta do is uh, jump on there, type in the type of vehicle you have, and you'll be ready to go. All right. You make something for Honda? We do not. Oh, what? Not. For Honda. <laughs> all right. All right. No worries. Do, so no worries. do people drive Hondas off road? Right. Is that a rhetorical question? <laughs> We'll see if we can have you guys out here in the future, though, for sure. Uh, okay. And who owns this? Oh. Right here. The company in the U.S. based in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. That's where we have uh, a local warehouse uh, distribution. Yeah. Hey, you look and like you've been on a lot of adventures. I've been in a few, definitely. <laughs> yes. What about in Israel? In, in Israel too. They got some in, cool trails out there? We have some cool trails out there. Uh, a lot of my experience and on the trail with military jeeps. Ooh. So it's always fun to go on somebody else's dime that you don't have to worry <laughs> about your vehicle. They like to downplay it, but this guy can drive a Jeep like you've never seen him. Like I bet. No, I've... It's amazing. I know, like... They, they do full, they do full switch. The one I'm imagining, he yeah. does, like, the Krav Maga of, like, Jeep off-roading, right? Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, got, I got a few scars to prove it. <laughs> to prove it, too. But, uh, All right. Yeah, definitely. So. Nice. Well, thank you for sharing. Now we're going to bring it back over here to Donald at Soft Roading V West. Are you really soft roading still? Yeah. Well, I'm driving on roads that are not paved, they're not hard roads, so they're soft roads. Okay. And they're in the West. Here. I am fortunate to be in the West. Yes. Because have you seen the, if you Google elevation in the United States of America, you'll see this in the West, you got these giant mountains right here. And then it's like down here in the East, I'm sorry, East Coast, but it's like these little, <laughs> and then there's like the Appalachians like right here just just like just a little sprinkle yeah yeah we're fortunate out here in we the are West. we've got a lot of beautiful wilderness to explore and a lot of public land that we can get out and check out yeah nice okay let me go cut tell me when ready so for those who don't know me this is my Nissan Frontier 2011 Nissan Frontier What did you drive before? It was, it was in what? The air. What did you drive before? You have to be so close. <laughs> or you did out super I'm, wide. I'm, I'm out super wide. Okay. Yeah, cuz I got to catch a truck too. It's a little disconcerting. <laughs> um <laughs> Okay. Um you may have known me before I had a Subaru Forester. You may have I'm sorry. I just zoomed in on your nose. Okay, okay let's go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about being silly. Okay, and let's plus go. I'm all like Rudolphed out right now. So. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Let's go. So you may have seen me uh, in years past driving a Subaru Forester. That was how I got the channel started. It was wrecked by someone who ran a red light. And so I replaced it with this 2011 Nissan Frontier Pro 4X. The Nissan, my Frontier Pro 4X is on a two inch suspension lift from All Dogs Off Road. So those are springs, front and rear springs made by All Dogs Off Road. And they're carrying some of the first Coney off road shocks that in the country at all. All Dogs is the only uh, 
distributor of Coney shocks, of Coney off-road shocks in the US. And that suspension change not only brought the truck up higher, got me more clearance, it also dramatically changed the way the truck rides. Uh, it's just been a fantastic upgrade to the truck. Up here in front, you'll see I cut off the stock bumper and I've got a custom bumper up here. I actually fabbed this myself as a very amateur welder. It kind of looks okay if you don't look too close. I built it off. No, I'm gonna say that it does look pretty good actually. If you don't look too close. If you know about welding and you look close, you can see that it's flawed. But it's been on here for a couple years and it hasn't fallen apart. So I'm feeling pretty good about it. I did actually build it off of a commercially available winch mount that's designed to be hidden inside the stock bumper. That gave me a solidly built um, sort of foundation uh, that I knew would be strong enough to recover the vehicle if it needed to be recovered and support a winch versus what I would be able to weld myself. And so from there, I just built out what I needed to sort of trim out the rest of the truck that had been trimmed up and get some lights mounted on there. All right, it's just going to do a little B-roll here, Donald. All right, what kind of winch do you have? My winch is a Warren uh, VR Evo 10,000. And I've equipped it with uh, synthetic rope from Yankum Ropes. And my fair lead here, you'll notice, uh, we've got no hook or anything on this. This is a machined aluminum fair lead that Yankum Ropes developed. It allows you to just keep a loop of winch line uh, out here. And so you don't have uh, your entire front end of your winch line out here and it gives you a metalless recovery. Amazing, I like that. Uh, I might be getting a winch myself, uh, you know, cause you said. I got stuck yeah. and uh, <laughs> yeah. Is there uh, some way for you to mount it on your, well, we can talk about that later. Yeah. yeah okay. Also, um, with, with kind of a recent change, uh, I went back to being a medical x-ray tech mm -hmm. and uh, I have a lot of days off in the middle of the week now where a lot of people can't join me. So I've been going on more solo adventures. Oh, so yeah. I probably really now at this point really need to get a winch. Yeah. As with before, I would never go out alone. So gotcha. never really needed yeah. it. So yeah, being yeah. out solo, yeah, the winch is, yeah. is critical. Okay. Wheels and tires here. I'm running the Falcon Wild Peak uh, AT3W all-terrain tire. These are 33 inch. Uh, these won't fit on this truck unless you do have uh, at least a two inch lift on it. My wheels are actually also made by All Dogs Off-Road who also did the suspension. They designed these specifically for the Frontier and for the Xterra because it's sort of an odd bolt pattern and there's very few aftermarket options. These wheels are not only do they look good, they're, they're very clean lines, but they're also very easy to clean because there's not a lot of little details that, where you can catch dirt. Love these wheels. Nice. I like how what All Dogs is doing. They're really supporting this platform. Oh yeah, All Dogs yeah, is They're really, owning it. They're all about, they're, they've sort of specialized in, in Nissan. It wasn't what they set out to do originally, but um, they found this niche and it's worked out really well for them. Nice. And they're also just really, really great guys. And um, if you have, they also, they're also just really great guys, and they do um, offer suspension options for for things beyond Nissan, and they're all about trying to find the the right sort of suspension package that makes sense for the way you're using your truck. They'll talk to you. They'll talk about what the options are and what makes sense, um, and rather than just trying to sell you, you know, as much stuff as possible. Nice. Hey, real quick, Donald. Uh those that don't know, because um, peop some people aren't going to know, um, yeah. like we met on the Seabird Forester forums. Years ago. A long time ago. <laughs> or a long time ago, long before I even bought mine. And uh, we both were just pretty active, me uh, pretty active members on that forum. And we would share ideas uh, like with the awnings, with the sleeping setups, um, camping, car camping setups in our Seabird Foresters. That's where we, we, me, we met up so that um, I do kind of consider Donald, uh, you know, one of the first, like, even though it's an online friend, um, you know, nowadays, like, it's like you make an online fan, you make an in-person friend, it's almost like, kind of like the same thing. It, it kind of is. Yeah, because yeah, like, you already know them. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Through social media. Yeah, and yeah. I have to say that going back to those days, um, John was one of the people who inspired me to start camping in my Forester. He had built out his Forester to sleep in and I replicated that. And John also started making videos on YouTube and I watched a lot of his videos. He was an inspiration for me there as well. Um, but you were already a photographer though. Like, so yes, I had a background. I was, yeah. uh, he already had a background in it. So it's, 
it's just kind of natural that you would succeed and you would do so well. Um, and I, you know, I did it as a hobby. I just like, I like to sh uh, share information, be a part of the community. I'm sure you do too, but uh, that, I wanted to be part, I didn't make videos to make videos. I just wanted to be part of the community and expressing myself through video was, uh, well, to me was just more meaningful. So that's why I made videos. <laughs> yes, well, and you, well, what you were doing was you were you were sharing useful, practical, valuable information. I found that really inspiring. And that's, I did a lot of that, maybe more in the beginning than I do now, but um, it's the, taking the information that you have and sharing it with people who are looking for that information, I think is, it's it's a compelling, it's compelling. And I, I enjoy being able to, to you know, educate educate people where, where I can. Awesome. So let's continue on with this okay. beautiful build. So I am now camping out of a Topo Toppers Mesa camper. This is a wedge camper. This is a wedge style camper. It is built entirely of eighth inch. It is built entirely of eighth inch aluminum that has been formed. So there's not a interior skeleton with thin panels attached to it like many other camper companies build. Uh, it's very, very, very lightweight. Um, on my five foot bed truck here, this camper weighs somewhere around nine, this camper weighs somewhere around 200 pounds. Wow. The deployment is super, like most, like most wedge campers, the deployment is super fast and easy, very easy to set up, very fast and easy to take down. I, one thing I really like about this, what stood out to me is um, like the low profile of it. So with this close, it's, it's not, it's really low profile. Like, it's got a very, yes, yeah. it's got a very, one of the things that appealed to me about it was the very sleek lines. It's very low, slim, sits close to the cab. And many camper companies build their framework out of aluminum extrusion. And so you get this sort of busy, you know, um, it's not, it's, the lines aren't as clean. And that was another thing that appealed to me about the Topo Toppers was just the fact that the, the look is, is very, very clean. Yeah, cool. That's such a coincidence that we're both out in Ventura that one day. That's right. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't staged. <laughs> Back here, I've recently completed fabricating a swing out bumper. This was a big welding project for someone who is not a welder. Um, I spent months of weekends on this, but I finally got it put together. This arm swings out like any of them. I replaced the original bumper with a bumper that I built here. So I've got a toolbox here that holds some recovery gear, my chainsaw, some other odds and ends that I don't want oh, to have to. By the way, I bought, as you know, I bought a chainsaw because of you. Yeah, the door. Yeah, do, we have, do we have the same model? Oh, I don't want you to unlock okay. that. Let's it's just go. 12 inch. It's yeah, 12 okay, inch so I got the same one then. Yeah, yeah, and it's great. Yeah. What do you do about it leaking though? My, 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 uh, bar, my chain and bar all keeps leaking. Let me just show you. Okay, because I would love to know the solution. <laughs> super clever, high tech. Duct tape. <laughs> Well, all chainsaws will ooze bar oil. It's just it's just the nature of the beast. Okay. And so I've got mine. It's just sitting on a, oh. a lid of some little, you know, oh, okay. one of those little bins. Yeah, yeah. Black bins with a yellow lid. The okay. lid is just perfect. It just sits down on there. Okay. It collects the it collects the ooze, and <laughs> okay. you know, I can occasionally clean it off if I need to. So that's a solution. You can't stop it from leaking. You just have to catch the leaking. Yes, exactly. Okay. You can't, the only way to stop it from leaking is to empty the bar oil out every time. Uh. Well, some people do. Some people keep it empty and just put bar oil in it when they're going to run it, and then they empty it back out. But Got it. Me, this is I just want if I need it I just want to be able to grab it and go I don't want to mess around yeah 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 well yeah you and the P&W like it sounds about right yeah. I will probably start emptying it out just because you know being a Californian <laughs> we don't deal with too many trees oh, I, yeah. I never I actually personally have never dealt with a fallen tree in California oh, but we yeah. did have a fallen tree in Colorado and uh, we had those razor saws Oh, yeah. And they cut so easy, yeah. but the problem is, here's my buddy like, hey, John, can you deadlift this tree oh. so that, uh, you know, it doesn't pinch the blade? And uh, I'm like, uh, and I knew, uh, I'm like, I ought to just get a chainsaw. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs>
Yeah. All right. So I got my shovel on there. I got my propane. Ten, ten gallons. Ten of fuel. gallons of fuel. Back here, this was the main reason that I built the bumper was because I do a lot of deep backcountry. Oh yeah, when you and Jason go through that, those super long uh, yeah, I gotta have journeys, a yeah. I used to carry it in fuel cans on my roof, but I can no longer do that with this camper, and so thus that was what pushed me into building the bumper in the first place. Nice the storage for the fuel. Nice. Okay. Uh, what else? What else do we got? Well, you could. That's I about. Can't, the, I can't. I can't currently get yeah. in there because no, you're uh, good. You're good. Pinned in here. We are getting to. Uh, we are definitely past the ten minutes. Okay. Uh, which is okay. You know, we could yeah. go over. We just can't go under. Um, but as you well, can see here, cut, you're gonna have to cut some of that. Yeah, yeah. I'll cut some things out. Um, you'll see here that he built out a uh, little couch. I'm sure there's inside of there. Yeah, I, there's probably a slide out storage right here. No, actually, I've got. Um, oh, okay. I've got bins that. Um, what I've got is I've got, I've got lids that access storage inside the little couch thing there over there. Then I've got my Jackery 1500 yeah. built in right there. Down at the end, I can't show you because I can't get this open right here. But I've got a little door that opens up where I'm hardwiring in my, um, my, where I'm hardwiring in my compressor. Uh -huh. And so I can just open that up and air up all my tires without popping the, nice. the, the yeah. hood and hooking up to the I battery. I put my compressor at the tailgate too. Yeah. And just yeah. leave it right there. It's more convenient. And then eventually, eventually I'll be building out an additional piece of storage furniture here with a little counter on top and it will enclose that cargo door so that I can use that. You know, I can actually use that cargo right, door right. more efficiently. Nice. So this is early days and so I'm still sort of in, you know, very in cool. flux here, but yeah, it's nice. coming along greatly. Nice. And this is awesome. The nice thing about this style of camper is, even if you have zero build at all, you can get it on your truck and you can camp in it that night. If you've got a sleeping bag and you yeah. know some food to eat, uh, I got this put on my truck in Ventura, California, where Topo Toppers is located, and I just camped my way home, even though I had no build out at all. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I have a new rooftop tent now. It's a pop up clamshell like this oh, nice. the back part actually folds out so you get amazing headroom oh, more yeah. space um and i mean it looks like you know this is all connected through cloth and you know if, yeah. if at some point this gets damaged or if they come up with an upgrade hint, hint <laughs> um you could install something like that because it is pretty game changing because yeah, you see how this slopes down yeah. like this yeah having that pop out a little more so that you've got full yeah. room all the way right. over to here yeah, yeah i'll yeah. show you a picture of it when uh you know when I'm done when we're done talking but I think actually I think we are done so that's pretty much your your camping setup in a nutshell it is kind of nice because you just park pop up here yep you can't do that with like your gazelle tent <laughs> you can't go to like a parking lot uh, right. and, and yeah, do that no. and I couldn't do that with my fold-out rooftop tent that came out to like another parking spot yeah I mean now I just pop it up and I'm able yep. to get to get to bed yeah. so cool I mean we got a guest star here oh this is, we've got the owner of All Dogs Off-Road right here. I've been nice. talking you up a little while ago. Oh, yeah. Um, Thank you. This is Chad. He's the owner of All Dogs Off-Road. Well, technically He's not the owner, but not, I'm, the, that's right, it's a co and I'm on the board. So that's right. I'm sorry. This is Chad. He runs All Dogs Off-Road. Yep. And uh, great company, especially if you're running a Nissan, but you don't have to be running a Nissan to work yep. with these guys. The Nissan and, Toyota applications. Yep. Very and, cool. Uh, awesome people. Nice, nice. Well, uh, I was... I, I was uh, I was telling Donald like, uh, dude, all dogs off road with their own wheels and suspension setup. They real they're really supporting Nissan. Yeah. So yeah, maybe I'll have a Nissan in the in the future. I hope maybe so, I'll John. have the new Frontier. I hope so, like, John. Because I don't like the whole turbo. I'm 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 not. I don't want to go back to to running a turbo charger. <laughs> and every truck is going that route except for Nissan, right? Yeah. yeah. The last one. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I hope they stay that way for a little bit. All right. Thanks, guys.